Does reality need you to exist? Imagine a tree falling in a forest with no one there to hear it. Does it make a sound? This old question takes on a strange, unsettling dimension when you bring in quantum physics. Because according to Niels Bohr, one of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics, the world does not have definite properties until it's observed. No phenomenon is a phenomenon until it is an observed phenomenon, Bohr famously said. But what does that really mean? Does it mean that consciousness plays a role in making reality real? That the moon is only there when someone looks? In this video, we dive deep into Bohr's complementarity principle, the collapse of quantum states, and the profound idea that reality is relational, and consciousness may be the missing piece of the puzzle. Get ready to rethink what you think the world is. Niels Bohr wasn't just another physicist. He was a thinker whose influence shaped the very language of quantum theory. In the early 20th century, as classical physics crumbled under the weight of strange new experimental results, Bohr helped forge the Copenhagen interpretation. The idea that quantum particles don't have definite properties until they're measured. Electrons don't have precise locations. Photons don't go through one slit or the other. Atoms exist as probabilities, not things. Bohr's genius wasn't just in accepting this weirdness, it was in giving it meaning. He introduced the idea of complementarity, that contradictory aspects of reality, like wave and particle, are both necessary to describe the whole, even though they can't be observed at the same time. Reality, Bohr said, is not an absolute thing, it's a web of relations, of perspectives, of interactions. At the heart of quantum mechanics is the puzzle of superposition. Particles exist in multiple possible states simultaneously, until they're measured. When measurement occurs, the wave of possibilities collapses into a single outcome. But why? And what counts as a measurement? For Bohr, measurement isn't just a technical process. It's a profound shift from potentiality to actuality. Without observation, there is no definite outcome. This raises the eerie possibility that the world at its most fundamental level is unfinished without an observer. Not because we impose our will on it, but because reality itself is participatory. It's not a stage set waiting for us to walk on. It comes into focus through interaction. Bohr's complementarity principle is one of the most beautiful and misunderstood ideas in physics. It says that certain properties like wave and particle are not either or. They are both real, but never simultaneously observable. You can set up an experiment to measure a photon's wave nature or its particle nature, but never both at the same time. This isn't a failure of instruments. It's a feature of reality itself. Bohr believed this was a deep truth, not just about particles, but about knowledge, perception, and existence. Reality doesn't give you one absolute story. It gives you complementary aspects depending on how you look. And when you realize this, something radical emerges. There is no view from nowhere. Every fact, every phenomenon is tied to a point of observation. But what exactly counts as an observation? This is where Bohr's ideas ripple into philosophy and where they haunt modern physics to this day. In Bohr's view, the act of measurement involves a macroscopic system interacting with a microscopic system, a kind of amplification from the quantum to the classical world. But others, like Eugene Wigner and John von Neumann, took it further. Doesn't observation ultimately require consciousness? If no one's there to record the result, is there a result at all? Bohr himself was cautious. He resisted the idea that mind was separate from matter, but his framework leaves open a deep mystery. If reality only crystallizes through observation, and observation always happens from a point of view, what is the role of awareness itself? Is consciousness the final collapse, the last piece in the puzzle of reality? This idea, that reality is not absolute, but participatory, echoes across quantum theory, philosophy, and even spirituality. Physicist John Wheeler, inspired by Bohr, proposed the participatory anthropic principle, the idea that observers are essential to bring the universe into being, not as magical creators, but as necessary participants in the unfolding of phenomena. This resonates with deep traditions, 
from Eastern non-duality to indigenous relational worldviews, which see existence not as things but as relations, processes, co-arising events. In Bohr's view, the world is not made of stuff arranged in space. It's made of interactions, of questions and answers, of measurements and meanings. And consciousness, whatever it is, may be how the universe knows itself. So, does the world exist without you? The strange answer from Bohr's legacy is yes and no. Yes, there is an underlying reality. But no, it is not fixed, finished, or fully real until engaged. You are not a detached observer watching a machine tick. You are a node in the web, a participant whose very act of seeing, thinking, and choosing shapes what becomes real. This doesn't mean you control the universe, but it does mean you are woven into its becoming. Without conscious presence, the universe may still be, but in some deep sense it remains unlit, unopened, unread. The moon is there, but the moon you experience, that glowing face in the night sky, comes alive only in relation. Niels Bohr didn't give us a final answer to the mystery of consciousness and reality, but he gave us something more precious, a framework for living with mystery, for honoring complementarity, for seeing that the world is not a dead thing, but a living conversation. No phenomenon is a phenomenon until it is an observed phenomenon. You are not separate from the universe you see, you are part of its unfolding, and the greatest wonder is not just that you can look out at the world, but that the world somehow looks back. If this stirred something inside you, share your thoughts below. Have you ever felt that reality becomes sharper, deeper, more alive when you are fully present? And if you're ready to keep exploring the beautiful riddle of mind, matter, and meaning, subscribe. Because the more we observe, the more we realize we are part of the mystery we're trying to solve.